Hi, I'm John English. I'd like to talk to you today about using photo reference. Um, I'd like to kind of start by saying there's some rights and wrongs with using photo reference. The right way, I, I believe anyway, is to use reference for the material to complete, the gives you the information to complete your own picture. I'm a big proponent of um, developing in thumbnail your image, your images that, that you create, that you want to create, and then bringing reference to the table to complete those images. So with that said, um, I'm going to show you, uh, I got a, a pile of photo reference here that some is, uh, some of these, some of these photos are, are really not very good photographs in general, except the lighting's what I want. I'm shooting figure at this point. And I'm not, I'm not interested in the composition of these photographs. I'm, in, I'm interested in the information and the figures to complete the composition that I created in my thumbnails. In my thumbnail, I mean my thumbnails, these are landscape thumbnails, but they're, you know, my thumbnails are little one and a half to two inch high, just purely pure value, uh, black and white division of space and a collection of shapes. Um, in thumbnails, I like to, to, to approach and I think I like to, like to explain to students that, you know, a picture is mostly shape. It's just a collection of shapes. If, you, if some of your shapes happen to be figures, you need to be able to have good reference to complete those figures. Now, you could do that from, from life um, or you could do that with reference. I think generally most illustrators and a lot of narrative painters shoot a lot of photo reference. Um, all the way back to the camera obscura to get information and I don't know what artists and there's a there's been huge debates especially recently with David Hockney's book about um, uh, who used a, the camera obscura and who didn't um, but obviously since the since uh, the camera was uh, accessible uh, probably starting with the impressionists um, you can see you can align photographs with certain paintings. Certainly you can look at books of Degas or Bonnard and see all kinds of photographs that they shot to inspire, to, to, to help them complete their paintings. Um, and so many, in fact, I would almost go where I could make a blanketed statement that almost all illustrators use photo reference at some point. Um, even, even some that work very, in a very imaginative way Still have the still have the need at times to explain something where they have to have a piece of photo reference, and using it correctly is is very important. I don't want I don't want to ever tell a student or anybody that a photograph should be the composition of your painting, um, we or or illustration. We we myself and the instructors at the art department like to say don't let your reference control your image and we do that by having our students learn how to draw in different ways you know learning how to draw academically from the model from life learning how to draw from photo reference um, learning to draw in your sketchbook learning to render are all different ways of drawing but at the same time drawing from memory and drawing from your imagination without looking at anything becomes incredibly important because that's where you you compose your pictures it's the beginnings of composing your picture um, so we would like to say compose your picture first bring the reference to it to refer to and finish the picture uh, with landscape is a little different you know um, many of our many of our faculty and a lot of artists that I'm around uh, which are exceptional artists um, carry cameras with them all the time. They're constantly shooting photographs. Um, it's things that inspire them. Um, shooting, doing landscape, it, it works a little bit differently than if I were doing an illustration with a figure in it, because I'll, I'll go on a, a trip to develop a body of work. I'll go to a region, uh, maybe it's in a gallery in Colorado that I would, I would um, travel to the location, uh, drive through Colorado for days at a time, and do nothing but shoot photo reference and do sketches in my in my sketchbook. Um, I think the two work together. Then I would come back to my studio, 
I would try not to let the photograph influence me too much, but I'll go through, I'll lay, I, I always print out, and this, could, this is maybe a little old school, you can see all these photographs, a lot of them have, have tape all over them, I've drawn on top of them, I cut them apart, but I use them in a bit as a basis for the shapes that are in those pictures, and I, then I try to apply them to a thumbnail. I'll create the thumbnail after, after I'm looking at these photographs. Uh, which is a little bit backwards of what I explained and how to use it uh, with illustration. But um, coming back to my studio with a two-dimensional object, which I, I don't, I'm not very, I'm not, I don't treat it as an, as an important thing to me. It's, uh, it's the, there's pieces of it that I'm interested in. Um, there's shapes in there that I want to apply to my thumbnail. Then I create my thumbnails and then I designed my paintings, and here's an example of a little painting that I did. <clears throat> I mostly paint from my thumbnail at that point. I'm not looking at the photo reference because I've recomposed it completely. So I'm painting, you know, from this little thumbnail that I do. I'm doing a, or, you know, maybe you can see these better. This isn't this painting, but you can see how simple they are. And it's just a collection of shapes that I'll design my painting around. Anyway, there's a... Um, I think there's a right way and a wrong way to use photo reference. I've given you a couple of examples of how to, how to pursue and um, give it a try, see what happens.